Well, hello everybody. I want to welcome you back down into the dungeon and wish you a happy New Year's Eve of uh, 2018. Can't believe the year is whipping by so fast. But today seemed like the perfectly appropriate time to do this Roundup 2018. I don't know if it's a challenge or just kind of a video idea or whatever. But uh, Simon over at Fifty Shades of Green. I hope you all know Simon. If not, go uh, check out, search out the channel. Go subscribe. Simon's an absolutely wonderful teddy bear of a human being. Um, anyway, he has invited me to basically kind of do a list of, what is it, six questions here. And review last year and kind of look forward to next year and share it with you guys. So what better day than New Year's Eve, right? So... You guys can take a look at the garden while uh, I answer these questions. All right. So we'll start with a look at the Darwin table here where I have random sunflowers coming up in this planting of peppers, and I don't know why. But the first proper things up are from Batman. We have big chocolate Batmans coming up in the tray, so that is fantastic. I was uh, starting to worry that nothing was going to come up in this tray. But our first question here on the list is what was the best crop of 2018? Some uh, pet random peppers that are growing around. I'd say my best crop for 2018 was probably, surprisingly, the tomato grove. I wasn't expecting much of anything to come from that and we ate rather a lot of tomatoes and that was absolutely fantastic. We discovered the cherry tomatoes seem to be the way to go around here and uh, I have got a few more cherry tomato seeds set aside for starting up next year. So that is good. Uh, kind of exciting, you know. So yeah, I guess, I guess I would say the tomatoes were probably my best crop in 2018. Yes. Well, it looks like I need to water under the little shelf here with my mini double cups and such. But what was my worst crop of 2018 is the next question. So... Geez, I don't know. What was my worst crop of 2018? Well, I didn't get to eat, like, any of the cabbages because of those brassica moths. But ultimately, they grew really well. So I don't think I don't think that necessarily counts. Oh, look at those little aphid buggers in there. How rude. Um, let's see, I got some decent corn. Not great, so that's probably not my worst crop. Uh, you, you know what? My worst crop was probably the squash. I got no pumpkins, I got no spaghetti squash, I got one little tiny sickly little acorn squash. And that's like it. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember anything else anyway. But I mean my carrots, I had a great crop of carrots. I even got some beans, but yeah, no, worst crop, crop the worst crop, hmm, let's try this in English. The worst crop of 2018 for me would, would probably have been those squash. Very much disappointed. Hoping for a much better year this year. Well, next year, but that's tomorrow, so this year. So look at that little DWC garden going on here. That pepper is doing fantastic. I have no idea what it is, but it's doing very well. This garden salsa here, doing very well. I've got a couple of those Naga Vipers that finally popped up from the seeds Punky sent me. I'm uh, seriously thinking about making a second one of these but maybe fewer cup spots so I can space them out a little bit more. I do have a second toad exactly like this upstairs with just kind of random old desk stuff in it, so I may just do that to it. Not quite sure yet. I have dropped my list of questions though. So I guess the next question here is what would I do different or what lessons have I learned? I think this is probably the perfect place to take a look at that and discuss that. What would I do differently? I have got to stop thinking I can save every pepper in my garden and, and bring them in for the winter. I just... I think I need to grow an indoor pepper collection and an outdoor pepper collection and leave them separate from each other because it's really not going well trying to bring them in. I mean, I've got that MOA Scotch Bonnet there, somehow still alive. Yellow Scorpion, somehow still alive. I think that's supposed to be a Sugar Rush Cream there. Trying to keep this thing watered, but I don't think it's going to make it. And I believe this is a... I think this is the Sugar Rush Red. It might be the peach. Can't really read that sign at the moment, but uh, still struggling. Still struggling. And the El Oro to Ecuador here. You know, somehow still alive. The biggest miracle out of everything that's still alive is that mouse melon. 
But I mean, the biggest lesson for me, I think, has been that I can't do it. It's not, it's not reasonable. I was pretty sure I came to this conclusion last year, but this year, I mean, nails in the coffin now. I've, I've tried it a few years in a row. It's not going to happen. So, yeah, that was probably my biggest lesson learned, and the biggest thing I'm going to do differently next year is if I bring the plants in, it'll be that same old uh, Kentucky harvest. Clip it, flip it, try and ripen things up that way. Except for maybe this mouse melon. Because that just blows me away. Question four. Biggest challenge this year is the same as the biggest challenge every year. It's aphids. But I have a solution for it now. Well, I have several solutions. As Punky put it, the Bob Ross of aphid genocide, something like that. Basically, painting the aphids into the goldfish tank so they get protein treats is my solution. But it is still also my biggest struggle. It is, uh, it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge, but I have now found a use for them. So, huzzah. If they're going to continue to be around, at least they can be useful. Next question, I guess, is plans for 2019. And I think one of my biggest plans for 2019 is I want to convert this back to an ebb and flow bed in that old uh, black tray, the uh, original grow bed that I had because this thing it's been a few problems I appreciate the fact that they sent me this garden to try out and do my aquaponic thing with although they wanted me to do hydroponics with it but whatever but I've already got drain problems in this one here we'll talk about that later but anyway uh, one of my plans for 2019 is I'm going to convert this to a single bed flood and drain I'll be much much happier with that situation I am certain tomatoes what do you do you're flowering though. You see that? Bad angles all the way around. But anyway, there are tomato flowers on that. Uh, let's see. Other plans for 2019. I definitely want to experiment with a few different shades of the Three Sisters Garden. And uh, I want to throw peppers into the bunker. And I've got farm related stuff I want to do because I want to get into rabbitry and, uh, you know, expand the hen situation a little bit more. Maybe get some, some younger girls that are going to lay on a more regular basis for us. Oh, I don't know. Lots of things I definitely want to do with 2019. And uh, most of them kind of involve, well, the ability to produce more of our own food. I would really, really like to get even a basic greenhouse structure up in 2019. But, um, you know what, I'd almost say even putting a half greenhouse on the front of the house in that sunroom area I've pointed out a few different times is, is a bigger plan for me. Let's see, 2019, we're talking about getting some uh, row covers to protect our cabbages and brassicas from those stupid white moths. That's a definite plan for 2019. I got lots of plans for 2019. Same as every year. I got a million and one things that I want to do and about seven that I'll actually get done. So, so we'll see. What is it Rev says? Is a plan is a list of things that uh, aren't going to happen? Something like that. Hey, speaking of which, if you're catching this on New Year's Eve, don't forget to join us over on Rev Toast TV where we're having uh, kind of an online New Year's Eve party, so that's going to be wildly inappropriate. Lots of fun. You should definitely uh, check that out. Anyway, what is my last question here? Well, according to my little list here, the last question is who inspired me in 2018? And, uh, you know, there are so many names that I would have to throw onto that list. I'm not even going to begin to, to start throwing them out there, but the truth of the matter is each and every one of you inspired me in 2018. The, those of you who regularly click to, to view the stuff that I put up here and all of those of you who give me these great comments and suggestions about you know how I could be doing things differently or how I could be doing things better. Even if I don't implement these things, I really appreciate them and I'm inspired by your belief in my ability to do better. And you know, like people like 50, people like Simon inspire me to try and be well, a better person. Uh, those of you who have seen all of my stuff, you know that maybe I have a bit of a history that I'm not entirely proud of. And, uh, you know, I look up to people like Simon over at Fifty Shades of, of Green because that is the kind of love for the world that I want to be able to share with people. So, yeah, I, I might get my inspiration from so many sources. And uh, so many of those sources are, are you guys watching this right now. So, that is really awesome. I want to thank... Uh, Simon, you know, once again, for inviting me to participate in this. I think it's a fabulous way to wrap up 
New Year's Eve on 2018 and uh, yeah I wish you guys as well as myself wonderfully huge harvest and successful garden plans in 2019 and yeah let's let's do this alright take care everybody